Hi, I'm Angela from empoweredcrystals.com and I make healing crystal jewellery. Today I'm going to be talking about lapis lazuli and all its healing properties. So if that's the type of thing you do like to see, please do click the like and subscribe below. And if you're watching me over on IGTV, please do pop me a follow on my at Empowered Crystals account. So this is the stone we're talking about, beautiful blue lapis. This is a little raw piece, so probably not as bright blue as you could get. Um, most lapis is um, mainly of lazurite, which is that bright blue colour, but you do get quite a lot of inclusions, which this has got, and the white is calcite inclusions. You also get sodalite inclusions, which is also very similar blue, not quite as deep, but very similar, and you also get flecks of gold which is pyrite and that's that classic um, dark colour with the little flecks of gold running through it um, is classic of lapis. In the past it was actually prized in Egypt, I think everybody thinks of lapis and Egypt, the royals loved it, the priests and priestesses loved it and it was actually used in death masks of the royals. Cleopatra was extremely decadent. She actually had it ground up and used it in makeup. They thought it actually reflected the night sky, that dark blue with the specks of gold representing the stars. Um, it was also used um, by judges. They believed that the stone helped people to speak their truth. So it's a September birthstone. I personally wouldn't put too much onto that um, because uh, it has quite a lot of astrological associations as well. I think it's four signs that it's actually associated with. So it's not really a particularly strong power that is associated with um, a particular astrology sign. Um, the S September birthstone, just keep it as um, that it's a lovely present if somebody's got a September birthday, but don't stop using it if you haven't got a September birthday because you equally um, gain out of using it um, with the properties. Um, going on to the properties, uh, the main one is protection. It's really known as a stone of protection, it's supposed to protect from psychic attack. And that's really quite useful because it's linked to third eye activation. So this would be where you would um, hold it if you were trying to activate your third eye. You can do a meditation lying down, lay it onto your third eye like that. And then with the meditation, you can slowly, with all chakras, you imagine it as a closed flower and slowly opening. And so you can open up your third eye. So that protection from psychic attack, if you're working on increasing all your psychic ability, psychic skills, having that protection is really important. So it's great if you are trying to build up your psychic skills just to have that added bit of protection. Along the same lines of the chakras, um, the throat, throat chakra is also strongly associated. It's that blue colour. Blue colour is always associated with the throat chakra. And again, you would lie back and lie it onto your throat and you would imagine that closed flower opening up and activating your throat chakra. And this can be really helpful if you've got problems with public speaking. And also um, a big thing is if you have problems speaking your truth. So you tend to do little white lies to not hurt people's feelings. There's a sort of a balance um, White lies are absolutely fine, but if you find you're always lying to keep the peace you and you're suppressing um, all these pent up things that you need to say, sometimes it's good to get it off your chest and this will help with that. As mentioned before, it helps with speaking your truth as well. That is really important if you feel as though you're building pent up emotions. On that note, it is also a very calming stone. So it really does sort of calm down the emotions, helps to reduce temper, helps to calm anxiety and overthinking. It's also really good for insomnia. I've actually done a healing video with lapis for insomnia. I will link it in the description below for you if you want to watch that. But it's really lovely calming stone. It's also said to increase the patience because of that calming, you know, you can get short tempered and get impatient, 
but lapis will help increase your patience, increase your tolerance of people. So it's really nice stone for just calming down those emotions and balancing everything out. And when we do get calm, um, that helps to clear our mind. And another association with lapis is actually clarity of mind. And you can imagine that when you actually have all that temper calmed down, you're feeling nice and peaceful, you actually get that clarity, you can think more clearly and it will help your thought processes. If you're trying to sort out problems, then lapis can help you because if you're starting to overthink things, you can actually become quite overwhelmed, can't you, with all those uh, thoughts going around a subject and just trying to get that anxiety removed from it, any sort of emotions, because it's, it's very calming to the emotions and tends to reduce emotions. So it will help you actually see things minus the emotions and help with clarity of thought, which is really helpful if you're trying to work things out. It's also said to increase confidence. This is quite strongly linked with this throat chakra activation because it increases your ability to speak and speak your truth and helps with public speaking. It sort of alongside that increases your confidence because you can really think if you're calm, you've not got the anxiety and your throat chakra is activated so you can speak a bit more freely. You can imagine that that will help to make you seem more confident and also make you feel more confident. So um, that can be a great side effect of this one, um, uh, increasing the confidence because of all the other properties of the stone. Um, another, and it's my favourite property of this stone, is the manifestation and it's supposed to help make your dreams come true. And what a wonderful thing. I mean, who doesn't want to make their dreams come true? If you're trying to manifest something and you're trying to manifest a real, really strong dream of yours, then using lapis is really great one. You can include it in crystal grids and things like that. I would also include it in meditations. So. You can sort of do a law of attraction meditation where you're thinking about your dream and you imagine yourself in that perfect situation. And then you can just use lapis and if you can just put it on your forehead or on your throat. I really like the forehead because purely because if you've got it on your thought forehead and you're really thinking and imagining your dream, you can imagine um, that that energy is going into your dream, into your mind. And this is what we want, the added energy of lapis. Um, so on that note, I will be using lapis in a guided meditation um, for the next video on lapis. Um, I already have a ASMR lapis. I'll put that in the link below. And as well, um, in case you like the no speaking one, but um, the next one I will be filming personally will be the guided meditation for lapis and it will be lovely, calming, um, anti-anxiety one. So I hope you learn, liked learning all about lapis um, as much as I like talking about it. And I hope you um, have learned something today. As always, with all the crystals, it's just a uh, spiritual support, not meant to be a replacement for medical treatment or anything like that. Um, so just take it as it is and, and really see how it feels with you with any of these stones. Well, I hope you have a lovely day and I hope to see you next time. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye.